everyone hope you all are doing well in my today's session i'll be discussing about office politics politics are often a taboo topic as people try to avoid team conflict but that doesn't mean that they don't crop up at work the question arises what is workplace politics in their simplest form office politics are about the differences between people at work these can be differences in opinions personalities authority or power although workplace politics can be difficult to navigate they are inevitable part of any organization but negative po- office politics begin to foster your organization can suffer and it can spread negativity among everyone what is office politics all the best times office politics holds together a workforce all organizations need a structure and office politics can provide it in a healthy and sustainable way it can push the company forward with social capital at the worst of times those in world will the authority over others they want to control others this can cause contempt and resistance within the workplace the trick is to make sure that the structures in play are for greater good for everyone not just those at the top of the hierarchy or we can say the top management we will look on types of office politics aside from official titles and positions there are subtle yet distinguished roles that get played out in office politics roles such as gossiper bully advisor may not always be obvious yet most of them can be found in just about any office or organization there is a list of various office politicians types who abuse their power intentionally cause conflict or use their positions as a leverage to get what they want the first one is gossiper office gossips are people who talk to love to talk to others often in a nasty or underhanded manner people who gossip do not always intend to cause harm but spreading other people's personal information can cause hurt feelings or reputational damage if you have an office gossip in your work environment try to discourage conversations with them about others personal lives especially if the person you are discussing is not present secondly there is bully corporate politics often involve an office bully bullies can be found everywhere in life and a corporate environment are no exception in fact workplace bullying is on the rise learning how to deal with them is useful life skill for both in and out of the office a workplace bully acts at the expense of others they might threaten their team members interfere with their productivity or use social influence to cause divisions among employees bullies can come in many different ways and shapes and sizes the negative effects of their behavior can range from being mildly annoying to seriously harmful to their colleagues well-being then comes climbers third type is the climbers they are also referred as social climbers use the people around them to gain a status and social power within the workplace or in the life social climbers are never satisfied with their current positions they exploit their relationship with others in pursuit of power in business politics social climbers can found tactfully bonding with authoritative figures such as managers leaders and stakeholders social climbers ignore or avoid those they perceive as beneath them then the fourth type is advisor basically the role of advisor is to interpret data or relevant information they then use this information to help authoritative figures make important decisions often materializing in the form of manager assistants advisor form a significant part of office politics ecosystem advisors hold a lots of power as they have the position to use influencing tactics on those with more control than them 
a bad advisor will use that influence for exploitation or personal gain while a good advisor will always aim to endorse decisions that benefit the greater good then comes credit thief they are those people that steal recognition or praise for another person's work while passing it off as their own credit thieves do not believe in placing credit where it is due instead they take advantage of timid colleagues they won't speak up for themselves if someone else claims recognition for their hard work they are those who are silent people who don't interrupt in other work and they are the silent gems then comes saboteur they are someone who abuses sabotage who uses it as a method for maintaining power within the workplace they may try to re-derail someone else's project to make their own appear better or use underhanded tactics to ensure that they are in competition with no one then comes lobbyistic the lobbyistic is a person who makes authorized attempts at persuading those in high positions of power lobbyistic always have certain agenda and they use their influence to squeeze away in favor of others and they are those people who are making the lobbies just to have benefit from those things then we have got level of politics basically the level of politics very from minimal to high level minimal politics is normally in many corporate organizations then we have moderate politics and then we have high level of politics now the question arises how to get through office politics navigating the political landscape at work might seem like daunting challenge and it can be a big hurdle as well but a lot of it involves stepping into basic social instincts that we all have in some way or another that being said social instincts are not everyone's strong point because there are people who are not so extrovert they are a bit introvert at the workplace learning how to cope in the corporate jungle puts everyone to the test office politics are majority of the times unavoidable aspect of any work environment despite the potential for self-serving exploitation there are healthy ways to manage them you must have to know how it's time to uplift your company and propel individual performance and well-being because individual performance plays a significant role because these days it's in the hands of individuals how they are going to align their own individual goals with the organizational goal you help change bad politics in your office as to create a positive company culture encourage positive and open communication keep the focus on team goals and then access your company's structure reward the right people Uh, the first way is to create a positive company culture company culture is the foundation of functional happy workplace developing a positive nurturing healthy environment fosters work and motivation and healthy enga- employee engagement it also builds a sense of pride and value in one's own company role as well people who are self motivated are more towards company attainment of the, their own goals and the company goals as well and they are putting their efforts to achieve their own goals then comes encouraging positive open communication there are certain and several ways to promote positive and open communication open communication is an important part of healthy business politics for everyone to feel as though they are being treated fairly and with respect communication lines need to be clear keep the focus on team goals cooperation and team work form a significant chunk of healthy corporate politics keep the focus on promoting team activities and employees should be engaged getting everyone excited about your company's goals values and vision then come assess your company structure to 
companies are not always aware of it there are many unhealthy hierarchy at play this hierarchy can make those at the bottom bottom feel dictated and to unheard your company could have a top down or bottom bottom up workplace structure there are horizontal communication as well and the vertical communication as well regardless regular assessment of your company structure is very important then last but not the least rewarding the right people at the right time and the right place playing favoritism nepotism is dangerous game in workplace jealousy exploits from every corner when employees feel that they are being overlooked or underestimated favoritism leads towards uh, inequality among all the people who are working towards the organizational goals incentive productivity with reward is a great strategy majority of the companies are using this strategy as well nowadays but those with the reward power delegating the recognition need to ensure personal agendas or motions do not skew their judgments that is all from my side thank you so much have a good day allah hafiz